are the tools of the incompetent. <laughs> and those who choose to use those tools are hardly good at anything. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. If I didn't know better, I would say that the author wrote that about me. As an adolescent, I was the queen of excuses. My excuses had their own excuses. <laughs> As a matter of fact, my grandmother would look at, look at me quite often and she would say, little girl, you have a plaster for every sore interpretation. You have an excuse for everything. She was right. My parents spent quite a great deal of money sending me to piano classes, horseback riding, dancing, acting, whatever took my fancy at the time. I would be so excited in the beginning. And then I would become apathetic, make an excuse, and quit. I did that over and over again. One day my father sat me down and he said, Do you know you never finish anything you start? Do you also realize that you're setting yourself up for failure in the future? He also said, I am tired of wasting my money. <laughs> And I would like for you to one time, just one time, start and finish something. That was a reasonable request. What do you, feel, what do you think? I thought so. But I continued on the path of excuses. My favorite excuse? I'm cold. But I lived in England, so everybody was cold. That didn't work out for me. And then... I'm tired. Now my mother, she got tired of me saying that I was tired and took me to the doctor. He told my parents after a very comprehensive examination that I was a new man. Oh, I've got, I've got a medical excuse now. <laughs> and there is nobody at all can tell me anything because I was going to run this excuse to the ground. I thought of ways to use it, but before that, when, they told, when he told my parents about the anemic, I laid my head down on his desk and started saying, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. The doctor looked at me and said, stop being a ninny, you're not going to die. <laughs> my mother said, oh rubbish, I've never heard such rubbish in my life, and my father the one that was supposed to put his arms around me and comfort his little girl in the time of need, he said, oh, God's wallop, Beverly, stop it. I didn't get any love that day in the room. <laughs> no compassion at all. However, on the way home, I thought of all the ways I was going to use this anemic excuse. Someone will say to me, go and wash the dishes. And I would say, oh, I would love to help out, but you know, that anemic is really bothering me right now. <laughs> and my parents would say, go and help your brother shovel the snow. And I would say, that sounds like so much fun. I like to go out there and play and have fun in the snow, but that anemic is really acting up. I can feel it. <laughs> when we got to the house that day, we walked in and my mother said, go upstairs and tidy your room. The doctor is coming over later. In England, we used to do house visits. I looked at her and I said, but mummy, you were right there in the doctor's office with me. You heard him say, I've got anemic. <laughs> she says, Beverly, after laughing out loud, she said, you don't have anemic, you have anemia, now stop it. And if you don't get upstairs and clean up your room, you're going to have more problems <laughs> than anemia. <laughs> the doctor came and gave me an injection. Oh, that hurt. It was iron. He told my parents that I had 
to have spinach, liver, and drink Guinness. That continued for several days. Oh, the shot liver and spinach and then the bitter Guinness. But after a few days off of school, I started to get energy. I was feeling really good. I couldn't even pretend with my acting classes that I was tired anymore. I went back to school. And one day when I got home, my father said to me, now that you have all this energy and you're feeling much better, how about taking on a project that you can finish? I didn't have to think twice about it because right before he'd asked me that question, my brother came by and he punched me in the arm like he always did. And his excuse was, I'm making her tough for the world. <coughs> I told my father without even thinking twice, I want the ability to beat up my brother. I want to <laughs> knock his butt to the ground. <laughs> He smiled and a week later enrolled me into karate classes. I did well there. I had determination. I had a focus. I was going to beat up my brother. That's what kept me going. Galvin Coolidge said that determination and persistence alone is omnipotent. Trust me, I had both. Now, when the time came for me to break boards, I was a little bit scared. And a couple of weeks prior, I would have made an excuse right about then and quit. But this time, I kept going. The instructor said to me, don't look at the board that's right in front of you. I want you to look beyond that board and focus visualize that you're going through it. As a matter of fact, he told me to look at the people that were holding the boards and pretend that I wanted to hit them and that worked for me. So I want to tell you, Christy, she just told you about not to focus on yourself. Don't focus on the problem, just look beyond it. Now I have heard, like I told you, I said, I was the queen of excuses, therefore, I can sniff out an excuse. If you come to me with one, I can smell it. I don't make excuses anymore. I'm standing here today after having surgery less than 48 hours ago. This big old ugly boot was not an excuse for me not to stand here. <laughs> there are plenty of excuses, and some of them I like to share with you, and I'm sure you've heard some doozies. One of them, for example, what if it doesn't work out? You see, I am an MLM junkie. I love network marketing. And I'm going to tell you some of the excuses that I have heard. It's unbelievable. Well, what if it doesn't work out? Who cares? You just try and try again. Edison, he tried 9,000 times before he made the light bulb. Some person asked him, well, do you feel like a failure? Are you going to quit? He said, no. I found 9,000 ways how, how not to do it. Another excuse, no money. Oh, that's fair, no money. But there's always other people's money, OPM. Colonel Sanders, he didn't have much money when he started KFC. He took $105 of his social security check and started his business. And I'm sure in the last week, how many people have had some KFC, <laughs> right? It is global. Sidney Portier was told at his first audition to go back to his hometown and wash dishes. Now listen, we know the end of that story, right? Oprah Winfrey, she had plenty of reasons why she couldn't make it. Oprah grew up uh, as a very poor girl. She was dirt poor. 
she was raped. She had a child that died in infancy, but she didn't allow that to hold her back. I read that Oprah right now, in March, she is worth over three billion dollars. Just imagine if she had taken those excuses, stayed at home and says, oh, I can't do it. I'm too black, I'm a woman, and whatever excuse that she could use, I was raped, I was, and I'm not taking rape lightly, please don't think that. But she did not use it as an excuse. She might have used it to push her forward. I'm too old. How many people have heard that I'm too old nonsense? <laughs> Ida Kimlin was 99 years old when she ran a 100 meter dash. She won it at the age of 99 back in 2014. When some of us that half her age, or maybe quarter of her age, as I look around here, having a hard time just getting out of bed. This woman is out there running. How amazing is that? Not worried about breaking a hip or anything. She's what she's just out there doing it. Time. Time is always an excuse. We are so busy chasing the almighty dollar, doing this and doing that and on the cell phone. You know, you go to a restaurant, you see people. They're still on their cell phone. They're not spending time with their families. What is keeping you from spending time with yourself, with your family? When I was in chiropractic college, I was studying with a friend of mine. We were outside. And all of a sudden, he just stopped, walked over to a rose garden. He picked two roses, handed me one, and started smelling the other. I'm like, what are you doing? We've got an exam tomorrow. We don't have time to smell roses. He looked at me and he said, Beverly, I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. He continued by telling me that he had a terminal illness and he was actually on borrowed time. That was a wake up call for me. I stopped and I started smelling the roses. I'm asking you, don't be so busy with life that you can't take time to smell the roses. I don't know why I made all the excuses that I did as a child. Maybe it was fear. Fear. A lot of us have fear. When I admit it, some of us are afraid of flying. Some of us are afraid of standing up here and giving a speech. There are two ways you can handle fear. You can forget everything and run, or you can face everything and rise to the occasion. If you choose to stand and rise to the occasion, there are some things that you have to do. Do you remember the movie Forrest Gump? Who's seen that movie? Do you remember the bullies when they were chasing him and he had on his leg braces and he started running? Can't do that with his feet, but he started running. And everything, the bolts came off and he realized that he could run. That is what I want you to know. That sometimes, like Christy was saying, it's inside of you, but you don't know it's there. So just tap into it. Like she said, if you need a coach, I'm sure there are coaches in this room that can help you. I would like to say that Harriet Tubman said it this. When she said, if the dogs are after you, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep 
going. If you hear them shouting after you, keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. Follow your dreams. Don't let anything or anyone stand in your way and stop the excuses. Let them.